to start round six, it's going to make sense. Bajorn is going to try and attack these wonderful dwarves. One has one wound on it. So remember, they have two health, and they roll two defense dice. Poor Bajorn only gets to roll one red die, and they're still not in a, a shadow zone. So it's just it's going to be what it'll be. Before doing any of that, though, he gets to regenerate because he now has a regenerate, regenerate ability by one, and he has a total of seven health, so he can go to six. That's nice, at least. So it's going to be one red die against two blue dice. And that is a total fail. So <laughs> one activation done. Let's get two more done. Look at that. That is nice. That's going to be two points of damage. So he'll have another dwarf wounded, but he'll gain one XP. We'll update this XP right here and then immediately use it. I know this could be wasteful. We only have one more activation, but I'm hoping he can do something cool here. We're going to use that Blind Fury. Remember, that Blind Fury allows him to get plus one hit. So, But then also his defense is minus one. But I'm hoping he can maybe do something good here. The two damage he did so far, though, will take out one of these minions and there's another one that's wounded. Here's to remind us of our one additional damage. Let's see what we get. Oh, yeah. Okay. One, two, three points of damage, one shield. That does another two points. That'll take out another minion, and that other minion has one wound. We'll snag one XP for that. We'll take out this minion, and now there's only one minion and one boss. Here's the thing. I was really hoping I could take out that second minion, and maybe, just maybe, he could have headbutted out the boss. He's not going to be able to do that. But we're going to do our headbutt action hopefully being able to take out that last minion and then Ajax can annihilate the final boss. Headbutt is just a single yellow die. Oh yeah, that's three points of damage. Now how I'm understanding it, he can't headbutt both enemies. So you have to go for the minions first, so he'll take out that minion. And we'll remove this minion from the board. But this boss does have two health and is fully healthy. Bajorn, once again, since he used that Blind Fury, he has to lose this additional b uh, bonus of one shield from Ostara that he'd normally get just because she's got that bulwark. But he still gets to roll his two blue defense dice, and the, um, the dwarves will roll two attack yellow dice. Oh, perfect. Attack one, block one, no damage. Moving on to Ajax, I believe Ajax is going to be able to take out this dwarf with one hit. Hopefully. Let's see if he can do it. Our dice pool is two red dice, two yellow dice. Remember, we can re-roll one of our attack dice. And then the defenders just have two blue dice. This should be easy, right? Right? But you never know with dice. You never know. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, four, three. We did three points of damage. Took out the boss dwarf. This dwarf is no more, and every character gets 3 XP. Ostara will be at 6, Bajorn will be at 5, Ajax will be at 9, also oh, close to 10, and Sybil will be at 10. Oh, heck yeah. Fortunately, that was only Ajax's first action. His second action is he's going to move into here and pick up these items. Now, this is kind of weird. I mean, I like it, but it's still kind of weird. So he's going to go in here for his first movement point. His second movement point, he's going to pick these up. He can for free then adjust what he has out as his weapons, but then he can also give any of these items to other heroes, and they, for free, can also adjust what's in their inventory. So he's going to give that short sword over to Ostara so she actually has some, uh, you know, maybe a good weapon. <laughs> so let's do that quick. I think it's safe to say that Ajax is going to be our strongest hero right now. He's actually going to get rid of his wand of stupor, just so that he can put this shadow orb here because that will let him roll another yellow and red die for attack. So he's going to be rolling three yellow and two red whenever he attacks. And he's got these awesome abilities where if he's in the shadow mode, the defender can get minus one um, shield or, and actually, because there's two of them. So if he gets two bams, one hero in shadow mode can heal by one. <laughs> and then he's going to give this um, long sword over to Astara. Ostara will place her longsword right in her hand because she can have two single-handed. So she has two longswords now. That's kind of cool. Um, one's going to give her one red die and one's going to give her one yellow die, but both of them give her shield dice, which is great except for against that roaming monster. That will end Ajax's turn, and there's no counterattack because we were able to destroy all of those dwarves. So I think now we're going to move to Sybil. Now Sybil could try and attack 
this uh, huge spear maiden, but I don't think she's going to do much damage. Plus, this, this, this pointed right at her. I wouldn't want to attack. So what she's actually going to do is something a little bit different. She is going to take a step into this room for her first movement point and her second movement point. She's going to open this door. We're going to be looking to see if we can get some easy treasure in this room. We, of course, have to start by flipping a do door card to see what we get. Oh, perfect. That's just what I was hoping. Look at this. No enemy and two treasures. So we'll have two treasures in that room. We'll place those treasures right in here. So that was uh, Sybil's first action. Her second action is she'll move into here and pick up these two treasures. They're going to be level two items. We have great sword and plate armor. Ooh, both which are good. The great sword would be good for Ostara, but it's not very good for Sybil. Sybil actually was traded this scepter from Ajax before, and I think she's going to do a transmute, a free transmute action. She's going to discard all three level twos to get one level three. This could be good. It could be bad. I might be making a bad decision, but I mean, level three is always a good thing, right? Yeah, it's just a healing potion, but still, I mean, it's still a healing potion. Discard this card during the hero's activation. Fully heal the hero or one ally in the same zone. I mean, cool. But I probably would have preferred to get that longsword to Ostara. I took a chance and it didn't work. For Sybil's third and final activation, she's going to run. <laughs> so she can move two spaces. She's going to go one and two and end in this room. Two reasons I'm doing that. One, I don't want her stuck in here where she can't attack uh, this Spear Maiden later. But she has the most XP right now. She has 10 XP. So if she sat here during the enemy phase, she'd get attacked by this Spear uh, Spearman Cyclops. Don't really want that. So now she's already in position for next round to take out this uh, lesser roaming monster. Sybil didn't attack anything, so no counterattack. We now move over to Astara. First things first, Ostara has the Bastion of de Defense, so she can regenerate by one. That'll put her at four. So because of that, I'm going to do something a little risky. I maybe don't have enough attack dice to be actually able to do any damage here, but do you see where this Maiden is? She is in a Shadow Zone. That means we could start using some of our awesome Shadow abilities. And if I just stay over here, when she activates, she's going to come over into that Light Zone. I don't really want her to do that. I know she's farther away, but I think what I'm going to do is spend one movement point to move into this room. <laughs> Good thing I dodged that spear for now, at least. Uh, move into the room, and then I'm going to attack twice. Here's our dice pool. We're rolling one red and one yellow, and the spear maiden is rolling one green and two blue. Yeah, that's why I don't think we're going to hit anything. We don't have anything to add positives to our damage, so it's just going to roll them and see. Oh my gosh, one, two, three damage and only two shields. We hit the Maiden for one damage. Only 19 to go. <laughs> Let's do a second roll then. Okay, come on. That was one. Let's see if we can do two damage. Yeah, I know, not so much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, totally 100% blocked. And remember what I was telling you, this Maiden, we don't get to roll any defense dice. So essentially, we're just going to roll this attack die, see what happens. Two damage to Ostara. I think we are going to use this Charm of Protection and have her re-roll that attack die. Come on, looking for nothing. Okay, a one? I'll take a one. She goes down to four or three health. Oh, boy. And now we go to the enemy phase, and we're going to do the same thing. This crazy Spear Maiden is going to roll one red die against Ostara. What stinks about this is that we can't roll any defense dice, so there's no chance for payback. That's three? Yeah, that would kill us. We are definitely going to use that defense may reroll one time, one attack die. Okay, come on. Be a zero. Be a zero. Yes, it's a zero. <laughs> oh, I wish I could always call him like that. Let's look at our event card. We get forward monster patrol. If there are already roaming monsters in play, activate one. Oh, seriously? <laughs> if not, we don't have to worry about the if not. Oh, man. Okay, well, that Spear Maiden's going to hit Ostara again. Do you think our luck will hold off? That's two damage. So I think I'm going to use that Charm of Protection again and make her, make her re-roll. Okay, come on. Okay, still two damage. Ostara is down to one health, you guys. She is almost dead. Okay, we're going to go to the experience phase, and the first thing I'm going to do... 
plus one max health to enhance her health. This is for Ostara. She has six HP, so that's going to put her down, or um, XP, so that's going to put her down to one XP. But that means now she'll go back to having two health instead of one. She's supposed to be our tank, but it's not working. <laughs> uh, it just hasn't been working yet, but I think it will once we get her some good items. Sybil has exactly 10 XP, so she's going to get this attack ability here from her overkill, plus one wound if the defender has no shields. Now, it's not often that they're going to have no shields. I don't know how much that's going to be useful, but plus one wound I will always take. And that cost her, oh, it only cost her 5 XP to do that. Oh, because I thought that was me. Okay, so I think she can level up two things, so we might as well also level up her health. So she'll get plus one max health as well. And that will use up all of her XP. She had a total of 10. We'll move her up to 6 for her health. This ends round 6. We're going to move the first player token over to Ajax. And then, I think, you guys, I'm going to split up the team. I got a team of 4 here, but maybe I can split it up. Have 2 come back and try and work on the Spear Maiden. That's going to take at least 2 rounds, I think, if I only do 2. But then I can have the other ones start pressing forward to try and get to the level 3 area where they can start getting better weapons. I don't know. What do you guys think? Think that's a good idea? Uh, I'm hesitant, but I feel like I'm stuck in this area and things are going to keep happening unless I push forward. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Let's move on to round seven. Round seven, you guys, we've got Ajax, our battle wizard going. He has the best weapon. He's a level five scimitar or not scimitar, but scepter. So here's the thing. I could try and take three pot shots right now for his activation, but I'm in the light. Oh, why am I in the light? <laughs> or I could go into the shadow mode or go into the shadow zone and then use my shadow abilities. And it's kind of a toss up, but I think, uh, man, I think I'm going to go into the shadow area. It's going to cost me an action, a precious, precious action to do so. But I think I'm going to spend one of my actions to move there. The next two are going to be to attack. I get to roll two yellow dice, no, three yellow dice and two red dice. And I'm spending one XP. So that way, if I get one of those uh, crystals or, or diamonds, I get a, a two additional bams. And maybe then I could do my fireball attack. I could do this ability. And don't forget, since I am in the shadow mode, the defender right now, that maiden, is going to get minus one shield. Yeah, see, I just I feel like this is a good idea. Oh, and I've got my shadow skill here where I can roll a yellow die whenever I attack and get a bam, and then they would take that many wounds of the amount of swords I get. So I just I feel like it's a better idea to be in the shadows. Here's our dice pool. This is my attack. That's insane, and this is the defense. Let's pick these up, give them a shake, and let's put them in. Holy moly. Okay, so... Wow, two bams right here, but still no diamond, but still two bams. That's good. I get to reroll one of my attack dice. So our maiden over here has three shields. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and two bams. But remember, she loses one shield because we're in the shadow mode, and we're going to reroll this yellow die. It means we're not going to get that diamond ability because there is no diamond on this gold die, but I just I can't give up four damage and two bam for just one in six chance of getting a diamond. Okay, cool. So we just did another point of damage. I think what I'm going to do with my two BAMs is use it as a fireball. That gives me three more attacks. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten damage minus two is eight. She already had one health hit her, so she has nine total damage right now. And that's five plus two is only seven. Here we go. 5 plus 4 is 9 total damage. <laughs> she only has 11 health left. Do you guys think we can do that again? I'm hoping so. So let's re-roll this a second time and see what we get. Okay, here's what we got. So first thing is, she's going to lose one of her shields. We have another double bam and I, I, the fireball. got to be 3 of damage. But we can still re-roll one die. So let's re-roll this yellow die. Oh my gosh, it's another BAM! For the two BAMs here, I'm going to use those two BAMs as fireball, as a fireball. So that's going to be three damage, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage, minus the three shields that she has here. That's eight damage. So that means she has a total of three health left. That is it. I think I have to do it, you guys. I have to do the shadow mode skill that we have here. I'll roll one yellow die and I'll do wounds equal to the amount of 
uh, swords I get. This isn't going to kill her, but it's going to get her really close to being dead. She only has three health left, and we do one. Oh, okay. She literally has only two health left before she's dead. Oh, my gosh. Ajax is super powerful in the shadow zones. Well, this turn of events totally changes what I was thinking of doing. I was going to have some people start going off, but this guy, this gal is almost down. And here's the problem is Ostara is not going to be the one to be able to take her down. And if she just stands there, very likely she's going to get killed. So we've completed Ajax's turn. There is no counterattack because this, this maiden is stuck with... Um, Ostara standing there. So I think now with Sybil, Sybil does have line of sight. I backed it up so you can see it. So she has line of sight from here all the way to here. She just needs to do two points of damage. It's going to be iffy, but we are in a shadow space, so that will help. Here's our dice pool. We'll have Sybil use both of these for her attack. She's attacking with that javelin. We have the Maiden has all three of these dice for defense, but because we are having uh, Sybil attack while she's in a shadow zone, she will negate one shield. She gets to reroll any of the blanks that she has on her attack twice, up to two times, and if she can roll a bam, that's automatic plus two hits. So this is going to be close. We've got three activations that we can do this. Come on, baby, need some lucky shoes. This will be just enough. We're doing three points of regular damage here. There are three shields here. Oh, wait, it'll even be enough, more than enough, because she'll lose this one defense, um, the Maiden will, because we're fighting from the, sh the shadows. But then we also do have our BAM. That's plus two shield, or plus two attacks. So one, two, three, four, five. That subtracts it down to three. That is enough to take out that lesser, mon that lesser roaming monster. I kind of can't believe we did that. <laughs> well, I, really, it's thanks to Ajax. But so we'll take off this huge maiden, which, I mean, just awesome. Just looks awesome. And then we'll place this meteor javelin right here. You know, I am playing this at a harder level, not letting them automatically get them. I think it makes sense. But man, it would have been nice if she could get that meteor javelin. That's okay. We'll have to have someone bring it to her. Nice thing is, each character will gain 5 XP for that. So Sybil will go to 5. Ajax will go to 13, Bajorn will go to 10, and Ostara will go to 6. Action 2, we're just going to pick up this short sword just in case we want to transmute something at some point. Not that we're going to use that. That'll just go into our inventory. And then Action 3, we'll take two movement steps to start getting ourselves over to the third tile. It's Ostara's turn next. Since there are no enemies on the board, we don't have to worry about any activations. Ostara will first pick up this javelin. She'll have this in case she can meet up with Sybil to give her that. And she'll move here for the second point of her movement action. She'll then do this for her second action to move twice. And her third and final action, she'll come over here and meet up with Sybil. So that next round she can give her that javelin. Next to go is Bajorn, and Bajorn's going to go 1-2 for one activation. Then go 1 for the second activation. And for his final activation, he's actually going to do a trade action with Ostara. He's going to give Ostara this plate armor, and she'll immediately be able to inventory or put that in her inventory. Ostara is going to give him this leather armor, this uh, chain of protection, and this guillotine power or potion. So then that way, he can do a transmute action. So it does kind of stink to think of doing it this way, but I'm giving up a level 2 and two level 1s, but since the lowest one is a level 1, the most I can go to is a level 2 treasure. Come on, be something for melee. Oh, a short sword. Yeah, that's still not great. Bajorn will put that in his inventory. Bajorn has now finished his turn. There are no more enemies on the board, so nothing needs to be activated, of course, besides the elementals that we'll have to take out later. So we'll move right on to the experience points phase, and I've got two heroes that want to level up. Bajoran has exactly 10 XP to spend. He's going to get this. This shadow mode looks awesome. Plus one attack for melee, always, and then in, if he's in the shadow mode. And then if he gets a bam, it's plus two. So you get an, an additional plus three hits with that ability. And that ability is called Massive Darkness. Go figure. And you guys, I totally forgot about his regeneration that he has. So he's actually going to heal all the way to full. He has seven health in total. And of course, now he has zero XP. 
Ajax has 13 XP to spend. And I think he's going to get this sword and spell. Because this is just guaranteed hits. Whenever he attacks, he gets plus two hits and a plus one reroll to all attack or defense. Not all, just plus one reroll attack or defense. So he can reroll one of his attack or defense dice. But plus two hits, that's awesome. That puts him down to three XP. Let's end with our event phase. We'll draw our card. Oh, this looks familiar. Forward Monster Patrol. If there are already roaming monsters in play, there aren't. If not, spawn a roaming monster card. This is the exact reason I did not move on to that level 3 tile. I did not want to see a level 3 roaming monster yet. This means we're going to have a level 2 roaming monster. Well, it's, it'll still be a lesser monster, but it'll only have a level 2 treasure. So I'm really glad I did that. <laughs> and we're going to place it at what? Current level plus 1? Cool. And we get... Let's see... Bloodseeker Minotaur. <laughs> Five, so this has 20 health as well. Jeez. Whenever the Minotaur is attacked, it moves two zones towards the attacker as if it had slippery. If it enters the attacker's zone, the attacker takes one wound. Oh, man, he's going to be good or bad. <laughs> and he gets a level two treasure. Let's see. Oh, it's just a potion. He won't be able to use that. I'm getting lucky with that mostly. Except for those uh, that dwarf agent. That was the only time I've really had a hard time with th this item thing. The item thing is kind of a hit or a miss, the treasure thing. I, I don't know what I think about it yet. It's kind of cool in one way. And another way, it's like this. I mean, he could have had something awesome, and now it's like useless. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, he'll roll two attack red and two green for defense. Whoa. Okay, so he's going to be a hard one. Current level plus one will be this three, and this is a sweet looking mini. He'll be right here. And you know what I'm going to do, you guys, is after I get Ajax off of that first tile, I don't think anything will happen on that first tile anymore. I'm going to move the whole board down so it's a little easier to get everything in, in shot. So I don't have to spread out my, my camera viewing so far. I just can't get my camera out all that way, and it'll just be better to see the board. This will end round seven. We're going to move this over to Sybil as first player, and we'll start round eight. I think what I'm going to do in round eight, you guys, is actually ignore this Minotaur. If I don't attack him and I'm not in line of sight, he's not going to try and attack us right away. So I think I might instead go into this door, take care of what's ever in this room, get some better equipment before we go out and start trying to take out that Minotaur. You guys ready? Let's do it!